this one's gonna be another one of these fight videos, I guess. It's dark, it's night time. I don't know what's up with my phone, but you may not get to see me, but at least you get to hear it. So, I've done a couple videos on fighting, but I've left out some of the best ones. Oh, and just by coincidentally, if you've kept up with my videos on Facebook, I was talking something about wanting to be a beacon of light. To be a beacon of light for the world. This is just coincidentally, I just got a new job. I just started subbing for a company. And guess what the name of the company was? Yes, so I can be that beacon. I am that beacon of light now. Anyhow, that's just a little side joke. Coincidence, whatever. <laughs> so I hear people talk all the time. Um... I watch other videos, I watch some prison videos, I watch some videos of guys that have been to jail and been in similar situations. And they all have, they all say about the same thing, guys that have been to prison, you'll hear that it's much more wild and chaotic in county jail, because county jail, when by the time people get to prison, they're more relaxed. They don't have girl problems and issues like they do when you're in the county jail. Um, people have years, so they don't get mixed, mixed, mixed up and um, they don't get, you know, they don't have problems with their girls. And if it's girls, guys, vice versa. But these are big problems in county jail, and these are the reason it's so hostile. People are so hostile and so wild and... And people are angry and violent in there, because just that everyone in there's worrying that their girls cheating on them are gonna leave them, which happens a lot, a lot more than it does in prison. By the time you go to prison, usually your your girls usually gone by then. So there's a lot of fights that go down in the county jail. And I've seen some of the best and craziest fights there. So one time, I didn't mention this one. It was the, the last, the second or last time I was in jail when I was in maximum security. And on that run, when I first got to the jail, I was in a um, solitary confinement. Then they moved me to um, um, uh, a misdemeanor dorm, which is an open dorm. And that's where I had met the oriental drug dealer Tony. But I also met this other guy, and this other guy was about five, six, five, seven, maybe five, eight, maybe five, six, five, seven, say about one, eight, a little bit bigger than me. But I wouldn't have taken him for it if I if you would have sized him up, and if I would have sized him up, I would have thought that I would have been able to take him fighting wise. You can never, ever size a person up and tell how good of a fighter they are. You can hear it from plenty of different people's mouths that have been to jail, been to prison. <laughs> you very rarely tell by a person's size what they look like, how good they can fight. <laughs> so I met this guy in the in the minor in the misdemeanor dorm, and. I went and, like it was like several months, six months down the road, I, I moved, go to another dorm, find out, go back to jail, go to another dorm, and then see this guy again that I had spoken with briefly, who I'd met in this, in the my, misdemeanor dorm. Like I said, he was about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, probably about 180, 175, 180, nothing, nothing fantastic. Not really muscular, didn't really look like he could fight, but he kind of had a mouth on him. I didn't pay him no attention, didn't pay him no mind. So one day, him and the one of the bigger guys in the pod, it was a 
just a bunch of guys sitting at a table playing poker. And I could tell it was gonna that it was brewing, that it was getting rowdy, it was getting loud. People slam cards on the table when they are playing cards. They slam the tables, you know, it's a show of like authority of who's the baddest, who can slam their hard their cards the hardest. This guy was slamming his cards real hard. That's a sign of aggression. So he's playing like four or five other guys. And there's this other guy that he's playing with. And the other guy he's playing with is about... He's quite a bit bigger than him. He's about 5'11", maybe 6 foot, probably 2, 225. He's got a, maybe 225. And say the other guy's about 180. So the one, the bigger guy's got quite a big... Quite a big... He's, he's quite larger than the other guy, but then again, like I'm saying, you can't you can't judge a book by its cover when it comes to fighting. So I knew this was coming. I could hear it brewing. I could hear it brewing before it even happened. Uh, the blue guy yells at one guy. The guy says "fuck you" to the other, and they go to swinging right there in the middle of the pod. And the one guy's. The younger guy beat the shit out of the big, or the little guy beat the hell out of the bigger guy. Swole both of his eyes and had blood coming out of one of his eyes. And he was, he was so fast. It was just a barrage of punches that went just like out of nowhere. And uh, the smaller guy beat the shit out of the bigger dude. It was crazy. I'd seen similar things in my day, but. But it's very rare someone with those big of a size difference that, you know, a lot of people, you know, may may not agree, but, you know, the smaller guy a lot of the time has an advantage. He's quicker. He's faster. Which makes for, you know, can make for some, for, for gives you strength in some areas and weaknesses in others. Well, the, the smaller guy beat the shit out of the big guy in a matter of, in a matter of about eight or nine punches, just pop, 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 lit his ass up, I think the big guy got maybe one punch off on the little dude, the little dude beat the shit out of him, fucked him up, blackened both of his eyes, and had blood coming out of one of his eyes, they lock us all down, and, um, the guy that won, the, the smaller guy, his both both his hands, the, all his knuckles were all bloody. I mean, he just just went on a whirlwind, just beat the hell out of the guy within a matter of seconds. Like I said, you can never you can never judge by a book when it's too, a book by its cover when it comes to fighting. So there was other there was other fights that were that were similar. That was probably one of the better fights. Like I said, the guy just un unleashed on and beat the hell out of the bigger guy twice the size in no time and made it look easy. There was another guy in our pod. His name was Amin or Armin, something like that. He was a, a, a Muslim guy. He was like a he he looked he looked like a mix between black and and Muslim, like an Indian Muslim. But I think he was more black. But his name was Amin, and he was a Muslim, and he was gay. He was a nice guy. I've never had a problem with. I I know a lot of gay people, and I've never had a problem with them. I've never had a. I've had a lot of gay friends, and I've never had no problems out of them. But they they've been supposedly known to fight. I fought this gay guy one day. The first day I went to boot camp, as I've discussed before. But I mean was this five foot six, five foot seven, maybe five foot eight, say probably 175, 180. Like I said, he was gay, he was polite, he was quiet, he kept to himself. He did he was he was good in arts and crafts. He used to draw pictures. And he was just a just one of these easy to get along with guys he kept to himself. You never would have imagined a million years he would have fought somebody unless he absolutely had to. And then once again, you just, you could never read, read some, you could never read these people. 
like I said, you can't judge a book by its cover when it comes to fighting. So I mean, and this guy were getting in for in an argument. Now I don't even know what it was about, but they were sitting at the table, and all of a sudden, I mean, just flipped the switch and went from being this, you know, polite, quiet guy kept to himself to just into a just a raging maniac. He just went off and beat the hell out of this dude. He was about, like I said, like five six, five seven, maybe one seventy five, one eighty. The guy he beat up was about 250, six foot, and if you size the two of them up, the, the, I mean, the guy that he beat up towered over him, just in a matter of a few punches, pop, 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 and this shit just cracks off sometimes for no reason, I mean, just, this, you know, people will fight in, in county jail just out of the blue, you don't see this kind of shit out in the, in the real world. You know, usually people will puff their chest out of each other and talk shit back and forth. It's usually not like that in jail. Usually by the time people get puffing their trust, chest out and talking shit, that's usually by the time the other person will swing on you. So, I mean, and this guy, will, this big, huge dude, puffed his chest out, and I mean, just beat the living shit out of him in the blink of an eye. And like I said, you never would have, you never would imagine or suspected that the guy was like that. And so, there was this, this CO in the, in the jail, okay, there was this one CO, correctional officer, and he was, he was quite big, he was about six foot, maybe six foot one, about 250, not really solid, not really muscular, but just big, kind of big boned, but not very big boned, just a, just a big guy, okay. But he had one, the CO had one of these crazy looks on his face. He had glasses, and he looked like, he looked like one of these people that just, uh, you know, flips their switch and climbs up a telephone pole and, and goes shooting on people. Just the impression he gave you. He didn't talk. He was quiet. He had glasses. He always had this angry, disturbed look on his face. He's the type of people that are crazy, but this was the CO. Well, he was a cop out in the street. He's either a, he's either a road cop or Georgia State Patrol. I don't remember which, but whatever it was, he killed someone out on um, out on the road. He was like I said, a cop out in the street, and he wound up killing somebody. And so whatever, however it came down to be. They took him off the street, and he wasn't allowed to roam the streets anymore. Now he had to, he could only be a cop in the jail. So, like I said, this, this CO had like this disturbed look on his face all the time. You, you could tell just by looking at him as something you really, someone you really didn't want to fuck with. It's one of these people that you, you just couldn't, you just couldn't pin of, of what they were thinking at any given time. He looked like a psychopath. Like I said, he had glasses, he had this look on his face all the time like he wanted to murder somebody, and he looked like just not someone to be fucked with. Well, he was in the pod, he had just come in the pod to do rounds, when I mean and this guy had gotten in a fight, this cop was as big as the guy that I mean beat up, he was quite large, but he wasn't muscular, he wasn't very big, but he was about close to six foot, about two, two fifty, so he had size to him. He picked Amin up with one arm and picked Amin up off the ground and body slammed him with one fucking arm. He picked up Amin, who was about 180 pounds, with one fucking arm and and, and completely suplexed him onto the damn, onto the table. Some of the craziest UFC, WWF shit I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen that. I've seen him. I've seen hundreds of fights before, right? I've never seen no shit like this. This fucking cop grabbed him in by one arm. With one arm, he picked him up off the ground and power slammed him. Um, DDT'd him with one arm on the table. Um, just, I wish, I wish you could, I wish I could show you. It's just, it's hard to even put into words how strong this fucking cop was, with, you never would have guessed that he was like that, I mean, I, 
I've never seen anyone, one person pick another person up with one arm. Picked him, picked a mean up with one arm and body slammed him. Craziest, one of the craziest things I've ever seen. In jail, out of jail, on TV. Power bombed his ass with one fucking arm. It was, it was amazing. So you're gonna see all kind of crazy shit like this in jail. It, it happens all the time. <laughs> I was in two maximum security jails. I mean, um, pods when I was in the jail. I've described that in other videos. And so when you go to county jail, you're gonna see shit that you, you that you don't see on TV. You're gonna see shit that you don't see in the street. I fought myself. I fought quite a bit in high school. And out of high school, we used to fight in the bars. And I'd never seen some of this kind of shit ever, even at all the fights I ever saw growing up. On the street, and on TV, you just don't, you just don't see these, these fights that you see in jail. They're like on another level. Like I said, people are on another level. People, everyone's tension's high. People's, you know, they're, um... Their blood's boiling, their, their patience is run short. People in general in the county jails are just, you know, bent out of shape. Like I said, they have a lot, most of us had a lot to deal with. You know, a girl gonna leave you or cheat on you, Jody's at your house, all kind of sh shit to deal with that you don't deal with in prison, you don't deal with out in the free world. So you have a lot on you. So, I've seen some of the most wickedest, badass fights while I was locked up. And, there again, it's just not somewhere you want to be. It's not somewhere you want to go. I'm trying to deter some of you younger, some of you younger kids. If you can see some of these videos. If you can hear and learn what the real world is about. If you do drugs. If you steal. If you bang, if you gang bang, if you do all kind of illegal shady shit like I have, you go find yourself behind bars. And it's it's no it's no fun at all. I've spent over four year four years altogether. I've probably spent about five years incarcerated from jail, boot camp, mental institutions, rehabs, and psych facilities. Altogether, I'm almost about five years I've spent locked up, one way or another, and I don't wish it upon my worst enemy. I hope some of you can learn your lessons through my mistakes. If you're under the age of 20, 21, don't get into cocaine, don't get into heavy drugs. It's, it's a one-way ticket to jail or death. I just, if you watch my videos, I can give you names and proof that drugs will bring you death and or incarceration. I have a list a mile long. And not only that, but mental disabilities can bring you these problems as well. I have ADD. They bring me all these problems as well. You don't have to go that route. There's help out there. I didn't know until I was much older, you know, that I could be a successful member in society. I am now, finally, after years and years of torture and hell. But now I'm finally living my best life. I'm finally living a good life. I'm a carpenter. I've been a carpenter 25, going on 30 years. It's, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a doctor or lawyer. But I'm, I'm not a, uh, you know, a trash picker-upper either. So I make a decent living. And if you would have asked me at 15 years old what I was going to be, I would have told you a trash man. Or, or, I, or would, I, at that age, I didn't think I would, I would make it. I always told myself I'd be dead by the time I was 21. I didn't have the, I didn't have the, um, the word I'm looking for. I didn't have the confidence in myself. So these led to bad decisions and a lot of jail time, a lot of aggravation, a lot of hurting my family. I've hurt my family deeply from all the troubles that I've been through. 
but I just wanted to share that and get this out to you. Um, you don't want to go to jail. No matter how big and tough you think you are, there's always someone bigger and better than you. Always. And it's usually going to be the one that you least suspected that's going to hand you your ass whooping. I've had my ass handed to me. I've had black eyes. I've had sev several. I've seen several black eyes in jail. I've seen several dudes fight in jail. I've been in jail on several, several occasions. It wasn't until the very last time that I went to jail when I was arrested at work. That's the only time that I went to, that I had ever been incarcerated and did not see a fight. The only time. And I've been locked up and been behind rehabs and, and all kind of crazy situations most of my life. I wish I could have not seen half the stuff I did, but if you follow in my footsteps, be prepared to see the same. I saw a lot of blood and a lot of blood and tears. A lot. There's a lot of fighting going on. If you go to jail, your chances of fighting are going to be better than 50-50. I'd say about 75, 25, 75 that you're going to fight, 25 that you don't fight. And that, and that chance of you not fighting is more likely that if you let people bully you, if you let people take advantage of you, then you might not fight. But if you're like me, you're not going to stand for it. You're going to fight, win, lose, or draw. I never cared. You're not going to steal or touch nothing. You're not going to bully me. I would rather have my ass beat than to let somebody punk me out. I've always been that way since I was a kid. Anyways, there's another one I figured that was entertaining. Like I said, I've seen a lot of fights in my day. And the best ones I ever saw were right in county jail. You're not gonna you're not gonna get better seats. You're not gonna see a better fight than in jail. You're at Floyd Mayweather don't put on as good a show. UFC don't put on as good a show. You go to jail, you're going to see people swing it out, duke it out, for real. You'll see blood. I've seen blood on dozens and dozens of occasions. Like I said, the best fights I ever saw was right in the jail. i seen it every time I ever went to jail. I was in one of them every time I went to jail. This is Mike, the AD Advocate. I'm trying to shed some light on some of you young folks. Don't follow in my footsteps. Make your own footsteps. Learn from our some me and others' mistakes. It's late. It's night. I wanted to get something out, and I'm going to bed. I'll see you on the next one.